When we look at subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons, if we know what element we're looking at, for example, capital letter O means we're looking at oxygen, then we know the atom has to have eight protons in its nucleus because the atomic number eight defines how many protons there are. And for any given atom, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. So an atom of oxygen, oops, has eight protons in its nucleus and eight electrons. So how do we figure out the number of neutrons? It's not that straightforward. Neutrons do not always impact the chemistry in any significant way. But sometimes we do need to know how many neutrons are in the nucleus. So chemists figure that out in a roundabout way through the mass number, or capital letter A. The mass number is the sum of the protons and neutrons within the nucleus. And I want to point out that it is a number. It's a counted number, so it will always be a whole number. It will never, ever be a decimal. So the mass number is a counted number, it's not an actual mass. A mass will be measured, be given in units of AMU or grams, and it will usually be a decimal. So to calculate the number of neutrons, we subtract the number of protons, which is the atomic number, or Z, which can always be found on the periodic table. We subtract that atomic number from the mass number. So how do we know what the mass number is? Well, from an atomic symbol point of view, the mass number will be written in the upper right-hand corner. And right below it, the atomic number is written. Now, generally, chemists don't write the atomic number because we know we can find that atomic number on the periodic table. But most other scientific disciplines, including geology, biology, and medicine, include the atomic number. And then it's really super easy to determine how many neutrons there are because we just subtract Z from A. Now, when we name these various atoms um, with regard to their mass number, we use the element name and then follow it with the mass number. So, for example, this symbol right here would be referred to as hydrogen 1, where 1 refers to the mass number. The next symbol would be carbon 12, and the next uranium 238. Now, most elements have at least two or three different variations which have different number of neutrons. For example, carbon um, the, can exist as carbon-12 or carbon-13. Hydrogen can exist as hydrogen-1, hydrogen-2, or hydrogen-3. And then uranium can exist as uranium-238, uranium-235, has actually several isotopes. Oh, I just used that word isotope. What is an isotope? So an isotope is an atom with the same atomic number but different mass numbers. So, for example, if we look on the slide, we see the two or two isotopes of carbon, carbon-12 and carbon-14. Carbon-14 is not that common. It's radioactive, but it is an isotope. So an isotope always is referring to atoms that have the same atomic number. So carbon has an atomic number of six but different mass numbers. So two isotopes of carbon include carbon-12 and carbon-14. Now nitrogen-14, even though it has the same mass number as carbon-14, would not be an isotope of um, carbon because it's a different element. So when we talk about isotopes, we're referring to the same element but just different number of neutrons.